I'll read another poem from Patient Frame. This one concerns something that uh, a lot of you will probably be familiar with, uh, experience, rite of passage, many have experienced. Um, Don was just saying that, um, was asking if, if I had read to my daughter when she was small, and it was a, you know, a timely question, because that's what this poem is concerned with. It's called Herself Revised. There's a final bedtime when the father reads to his daughter under the half-moon lamp. The wolf-eyed dog sits guard on the snowy quilt at their feet, ears pricked, head upright like a dragon on its hoard, while the daughter's new clock ticks on the dresser. When the father shuts the book, neither feels in the cool sigh cast from its pages a breath of the end. And how can it be that this ritual will not recur? True, this latest story is over, Treasure Island, which held them a dozen nights, but the end has arrived this way often before. Maybe she's tired of the right or waking to a sense of herself revised. Maybe he's tempor temporarily bored or unmoored, reading by duty or rote, turning deeper inside his own concerns. How does the end enter? There's a hinging like a book sewn spine in the raw matter of time that coded text, illegible, and stretched too far, it goes. An innocent break, the father gone one weekend or the child sleeping at a friend's, followed by a night or two she wants to read alone or write for a change in her new padlock journal. She has no idea what has changed. She can't know that the enlargement of her life demands small death after death, and this one, the latest, is far from last. She will not notice this death being so intent on life, so implied in its stretching cruel work of seconds. Some nights later, writing checks or checking email, he might notice and wonder at the change. In a sense, such minor passings pre-enact his own. For a moment, he might lay down his pen, forget the figures, peer over the roof line and find she was right Orion, rising, is more blueprint of butterfly or bird than hunter. How does it enter? Through what rift or flaw? Maybe it doesn't enter at all. It was there in every sentence. The end. All the poems I'm reading seem to be long ones, so I'm going to read a really short one now, just for a break. Um, and then I'll tell you where the last line comes from. I think those of you who have been in the workshops will be amused. Um, dream. Octaves woke him to dusk, not dawn. A woman under the sealed window, singing, woke him to sadness six years long, and lawns of broadloom, spilled wine, the small white pillows of sleeping pills. What is she singing now? Where could this be? Should have begun life years ago, instead of at some address to come in a desert under a waif of moon. You are the least part of the planet, littlest of the sallow grass. Learn from the new and uncomfortable angels. Um, oh, thank you. Thanks. That last line, learn from the new and uncomfortable angels. There's a t-shirt around, the, everyone's, a lot of people are wearing it around the Kingston area, and it lists all sorts of, um, you know, folksy advice. And the last piece of advice is learn from, uh, like, eat organic food. You know, good advice, but, uh, but the last one is learn from new and uncomfortable angles. And uh, the truth is I need to get, I need to see an optometrist. So I'm starting to, words kind of blur, you know, 20 feet away on someone's T-shirt. So I read that as learn from the new and uncomfortable angels. And, uh, yeah, so I just discreetly stole that and stuck that in here. So poetry really can, can come from anywhere, even from misreadings of signs and t-shirts. <laughs>